This tutorial is a brief introduction to the general app layout and workflow of VDMX5 Beta 8. VDMX was designed to be used with two inspectors. You're probably familiar with inspectors from other applications. Generally speaking, they're windows that contain some kind of very specific interface or fine-grained control. Inspectors are usually in their own windows because the controls and interfaces that they offer aren't usually the focus of the application. There's stuff that you want to edit and that you need to edit, but you don't necessarily want to work with all the time. And they're in their own window so you can close it when you're done. VDMX's inspector differ from inspectors and other software really only in one significant fashion. VDMX's inspectors are contextual. And that means that they update themselves as you work with the application, so they always reflect whatever you're working with. So as you click on UI items and inspect layers in VDMX, the inspectors will constantly be refreshing themselves to show you the slider inspector or the layer inspector or the inspector for whatever you are working with at that moment. And this is done to just make the most of your space. Uh, well, let's dive right into it. VDMX really only has two inspectors, a general one and a very specific one. The general one is called the Workspace Inspector, and it's called the Workspace Inspector because it inspects, well, your workspace, and that's pretty much everything in VDMX. If you want to make this visible, you just click, you just type Command-1 on your keyboard, or you can go to the window menu here and choose Workspace Inspector. This is the Workspace Inspector window, and right off the bat, you should notice that at the top, there are a series of tabs. These tabs describe the, the general different facets of your workspace. So the, the files tab shows you all the files that you have loaded, and I've, I've got a bunch of files loaded here. Uh, the vidin tab shows you all of the video inputs, and video inputs can be windows and other applications, or they can be digitizers like Blackmagic cards or little cheap USB digitizers. Uh, assets are also part of your workspace. Assets are basically saved effects presets or saved composition modes or saved effects chains. And you can browse and buy all the categories and view previews for everything. Presets are also part of your workspace. A preset is basically a snapshot of all the layers and plugins that you're working with at any given time. Uh, I guess you could say that this is one way to create little mini sub instruments, little mini interactive, little mini interactive uh, setups that you can work with to to create output. Layers are also a big part of your workspace. Your layers determine what appears in your output. Whatever whatever your layers render will appear out here. So right now, for example, uh, I've just got you know this little spinning cubes showing up, and that's because I've got the QC source uh, playing back right now. I don't want to get too specific into any of this because we'll have uh, more video tutorials on these later. Uh, plugins are also a big part of your interface. Plugins are basically objects that you create that do dedicated tasks within VDMX. So for example, we have a media bin plugin here that we can use for triggering different files, and we have a clock plugin that we can use to keep things synchronized and quantized uh, on, on different layers. Uh, well, generally speaking, that's your workspace inspector. It's all the high level stuff. All the really big things in VDMX can be found in here. Uh, the other inspector that VDMX has is the user interface inspector. And this is used for the most part to edit properties of specific user interface items. Uh, and this will appear whenever you click on a UI item. Uh, or if you choose to hide it, you can make it visible by typing Command-2 on your keyboard or going to the window menu and choosing UI Inspector here. So right now the UI Inspector is visible, and as you can see, it is inspecting the slider down here, which I just inspected, the Layer Opacity slider. Much like the Workspace Inspector, the Slider Inspector has a series of tabs in it that lets us edit different properties of the slider. I can choose what data sources the slider is receiving from or sending to, or I can even add a whole bunch of marks to it or even make a little, little presets that affect just this slider. Uh, again, I don't want to get too specific into any of these details. I, I'll save that for another tutorial. but. Generally speaking, the UI inspector is used for inspecting and modifying properties of UI items like sliders and, and buttons and pop-up buttons. Uh, all, all the really granular controls can be found in here. Uh, inspectors like this are useful because they let you edit properties of things that you may not want to have visible all the time. This is nice because VDMX was built as a, as a performance application and there's only so much you can have on screen at any one time. Uh, oh, speaking of which, uh, many inspectors in VDMX can be opened up into their own window. Uh, and this is generally a good idea because if we're building a performance application, we're going to want some parts of it to be static and unchanged. And we do this by clicking on this little window and window icon here, this little, little white icon. Anytime you see that, if you click on it, 
it will open up that inspector in its own window. So I'm going to do that. And then the layer source is open in its own window. And this window isn't, it's not part of any inspector. It'll just stay there until I change it or get rid of it or move it. It's just part of my interface now. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of a lot of uh, inspectors had that uh, had that in them. Uh, even the plugin inspector, we can open up the clock, we can up the, open up the media bin in in, uh, in its own window. But let's go back to layers. Let's open up the layer effects and composition in their own windows too. And now we see another really interesting property of windows. Windows are tabbed. We really like tabs. In VDMX, the tabs appear on the bottom, and using them is pretty simple. All you have to do is click on the tab, and that switches the contents of the window to that tab. Uh, you get into it a little bit more later, but these tabs can also be controlled with keyboard shortcuts. And if you have the UI inspector vis visible, all you have to do is click on the tab, and it will automatically inspect the receiver. We'll get into using that Boolean data receiver a little bit more later. That's just where it is for future reference. Uh, so the tabs are great because they let you make the most of your window space, but you don't necessarily need to have things in tabs. If you want to tear a window out of a tab, you just grab it and drag it off, and the window will, will appear in its own window. Uh, windows also snap to each other, so if you're dragging them around, you can snap them like that and like that. And if you're familiar with earlier versions of EDMX, dragging windows works relatively the same. Uh, if you hold down Command or Option, and then you click and drag on the title bar of a window, It'll move all the windows that are quote unquote attached to it. Uh, so that makes it very easy to move around big stuff. Uh, you can also lock windows if you want to prevent your interface from being modified further. And you do that by going to the window menu and then just choosing lock windows. And then all the size and resize icons disappear and the windows get stuck in place. Uh, you can also move windows onto other screens. By default, you're prevented from dragging windows off screen, but if you disable this, this option up here, you can just drag it right off, no problem. And that's handy for people who have multiple GPUs. Uh, the other thing we sh that I should point out about these windows is the magnifying glass icon. I mentioned earlier that the inspectors in VDMX are contextual and they will update themselves as you're working with things. This is sort of what I'm talking about here. This little magnifying glass icon right down here will inspect this layer. Uh, so I click on this and it will show the workspace inspector if it's not visible. It will switch to the layers tab and it will inspect that layer. And there we go and it did it. And this doesn't just work with layers, this will also work with plugins. So if I have a different plugin inspected and I'm in a different tab, I can click this button here and it will switch to the plugins tab and it will inspect the media bin for me. So this is a, a very handy way to quickly work with inspectors. Uh, I've mentioned a couple times now that VDMX is a performance application. Well, as a performance application, a big part of that is outputting. Outputting to another screen, to a TV, to a video projector, to an LED wall, any of that stuff. If you want to output in VDMX, you're going to do it by turning full screen on. And we do this by going to the window menu and choosing full screen options, which is also just command F on your keyboard. And what that does is that opens this window, this window here. Much like the other inspectors that we've seen, uh, this has a series of tabs across the top that lets us switch the different modes. By default, the window mode is enabled, and that just means that, their output, that the output will be visible in this little window here. If I click on the full screen button, I will immediately go full screen, and I'm working with a crazy screen setup right now, so I'm actually full screen across four different screens right now. Ooh, neat. Uh, and then all you have to do is disable uh, the screens that you don't want to work with, uh, or do want to work with, and VDMX will automatically try to full screen across them. So if I wanna just full screen across those, and VDMX will take care of it for me. If you want to disable full screen, uh, you just click on the window tab, or you can just type Command Shift F, which is the shortcut for switching in and out of full screen. Uh, I think that pretty much covers the basics. Uh, there are more video tutorials available, uh, and I'm sure we're going to get into more of the details of layers, plugins, full screen down options, and all that stuff.